we've got so many blooms coming in some of them were supposed to come in for valentine's day so you can see behind me we literally have thousands of tulips in the small space alone and i thought i would take you through what a week in a winter tulip forcers life looks like especially when we have a lot of unexpected blooms come in and how I am moving these stems. Now, one thing I've embraced this year is that there are just some things that are out of our control. When it comes to forcing bulbs, especially winter tulips, it's a lot easier to dial in when things will be blooming because you have control over when you start forcing them. But sometimes some bulbs are just too eager. Sometimes some are just too slow. So inevitably you will have some that come up a lot quicker or a lot slower. And that's the issue that I am facing today. But here's the thing, a sale is a sale. A sale doesn't matter if it happens today or if it happens in a month from now for Valentine's Day. And because I am selling the majority wholesale, the pricing is going to stay the same. So it really does not matter for me. Let's take a look at what we have. All of this stuff is technically for Valentine's Day. Some of the stuff will be coming in a little bit earlier, which is fine because I do have a CSA and I'll talk a little bit more about how many stems I need for that. This is called White Valley Exotic Emperor, also supposed to come in for Valentine's Day. Clearly not uh, going to be timed properly for that. And then this is one of my favorites. It's called Columbus. It's been harvested pretty extensively, but this is what Columbus looks like. She is a classic. This tends to be a favorite because it is so versatile with florists and retail customers. It's just this gorgeous double that eventually opens and if you are new to growing doubles you want to pick doubles when they're a little bit more colored up just because the inner petals need a little bit more time to also color up I find that when you pick these way way early they don't get as saturated and the bloom heads are not as impressive but you can see some of these are starting to open up and there's this like creamy pale yellow in here these are absolutely divine and then there's another tool up next to the Columbus this is called Corona Sunrise. So again, another peony style double. Uh, this will actually color up to get a little bit more saturated pink. And then it will turn into this like creamy uh, blush type of yellow pink. So they work really well together. In fact, sometimes you can't even tell that these are two different tulips. So those are, I think that's about six bunches in that bucket. And this is what Verona Sunrise looks like before it colors up. So this is way too early. This is still too early to pick, but you know, some of these are going to be ready. So I have been diligently harvesting and really just storing them with the bulb off in water in the refrigerator, just because these are going to get moved this week and so that is totally fine to put that in the fridge if i needed these for another let's say like another week out i might actually store them on with the bulb um, in the refrigerator if they're space i have two buckets here you just saw this bucket this bucket here has wrapped tulips and anything that is wrapped is basically pre-committed sold and just needs to be picked up or delivered. So now I know immediately when I look at a bucket, okay, all of these here have already been accounted for and I can not uh, sell these. Obviously it's a little bit harder to tell how many bunches are in here. So I try to make sure that I'm mindful of knowing, hey, like there's six bunches in here. I could fit a total of seven or so. And over time, as you gain experience, you can just know by looking at a bucket how many bunches are in there but believe it or not this has been like really helpful for me to have a process for when sleeves go on and when they go off because last year everything got a sleeve in the bucket and i would have to take off a sleeve i'd have to then finagle around with the bouquets to take a few out here and there and it just it took up so much more extra time that didn't need to happen so i found this process really helpful this year
new day, new blooms to harvest. It is now the next day. I actually came here earlier in the morning before I went to work. I was in a bit of a rush, so I could not record, but I harvested about, I think it was two bunches. So came back from work. It's about like eight hours later. And of course there's more blooming. So let me show you what we have right now. I would say that for the most part, this shelving unit has had relatively uh, stable blooms right now. Uh, we've got these two trays plus a couple more trays that are coming in with blooms constantly. And this is the thing about trays is that obviously like how it is out in the field, things don't all bloom at the same time. So you can see that this still needs time to color up but all of the buds in the back are more or less ready for harvest. And just by looking at the tray, you can see I've already harvested some of these. This tray over here, I think will turn really, really soon. And one of my big objectives is to turn trays as quickly as possible because the more, like I have a limited amount of trays. So the more trays that I have available, the more that I can succession plant and root. So again, this is the tray that you saw yesterday. Uh, this one is pretty much at the end of the cycle. Um, this is actually really interesting. This is a tray of Columbus, but this is almost like, <laughs> like an inverted type of Columbus color where it's more white with pink streaks versus pink with the white yellow streaks. So I don't know what's going on over here. These two look like that there might be uh, what's it called? Tulip breaking virus potentially happening. So there's nothing wrong with them. Even though there's the word virus, it technically is a virus, but it just gives this really cool variation in color. We also have in the laundry room, not as great lighting, but some more tulips that are coming in. These are all of the white valleys. So what I did was I put them here in the morning today to give them a little bit more time to stretch out. So at this point, the stem length is really, really good and reasonable before they were kind of all at this stage, which is a little bit shorter. So some of them are still short, but it's totally fine. And what I like to do with these trays is sometimes move them in and out. This area is, believe it or not, like about four degrees cooler than in there. So it does buy me some time when I go to work and don't have time to fully harvest and basically be able to do that when I come home. So this is what happens every day. I wake up, I come downstairs and I look at what has been coloring up overnight what is ready to pick i'll put that into a bucket and typically i don't have enough time to cut the bulbs off to wrap them to put them in the cooler so instead i'll just put them into the bucket and put it directly into the garage bulb and all and it works out because the garage is actually like 42 degrees right now because it's really cold outside so whenever i get back from work could be anywhere from like six to ten hours depending on the day come back downstairs and of course inevitably there are more that are ready to harvest and if you've grown tulips outside you'll know that this is very common when it gets warm outside it is very very common that you would have to go outside and harvest every few hours i would say that it's not as extreme for forcing winter tulips because obviously the temperature environment is controlled over here but it is definitely not a set it and forget it thing like i could not go on vacation and expect to come back and have sellable blooms because some of them will definitely blow beyond their peak. So it is definitely uh, time sensitive in that regard, especially once a tray starts blooming. I find that the first day, you know, you pick a couple and it kind of just like really compounds, meaning like you'll be harvesting anywhere from like 12 to 20 stems off of a single tray. And it kind of like goes up in this peak and then it goes back down and then you're ready to turn that tray. So I didn't harvest as much as I did this morning, but still harvested a bunch. These will go into the garage until tonight when I have a chance to bunch them all up. Now begs the question, what do I do with these stems? Where are these stems going? So let's actually break down where I have pre-sold stems and then what I do with just these uncommitted stems that are all coming in. So let's talk about just the pre-committed stems that I have first. This is my delivery week CSA. So I have a total of 12 bouquets being delivered. This is a cross in between my full share CSA as well as some CSA shares that were bought as gifts. So it's a total of 12 bouquets going out. I also have some a la carte bouquets that came in that that's like last minute type of bouquets. So there were, I think a total of four bouquets there. And then the rest basically 
quickly go to wholesale. So what I do now is I look at what I have and I allocate what I need into the cooler first. So that was what you saw in terms of all of the stems that were wrapped. Uh, those, believe it or not, were actually for another florist who was buying. Uh, she buys like every other week. And then I had a separate florist who also placed an order. Now that second florist who already placed an order typically will add onto her order. So what I do is in cases like this, I continue listing on Rooted or on my website platform, just the number of bunches in real time that I will have. So it's a little bit annoying because I'm using two different platforms. What I found is that my website platform right now, like I'm just still building a base of people going to it. I'm trying to train people to look at it, but some florists and designers who use the Rooted platform are just used to that and that's what they like to use. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I try to manage inventory on both sides. So if inventory is bought off of Rooted, then I immediately update my website portal to reflect that inventory so that I'm not overselling the amount of bunches that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to upload the White Emperor stems onto Rooted in my website to let people know that those are available and I have a lot. But really this is a game of managing to make sure you have enough stems for your CSA. I mean 12 bouquets for the CSA is not an insignificant amount. I do anywhere from, I would say like nine to 10 stems in this week's uh, bouquet because of all the doubles that I have, they will get nine stems. So nine times 12 is what, 108 stems, right? And then you have those four a la carte bouquets. Now you start adding in some wholesale. That is actually a decent amount of pre-committed stems. So you're always trying to make sure that when you offer offerings to the florist that they feel like that there's a lot of abundance that they have to choose from and this is where it starts getting tricky because unless if you are really planning successions where you have in excess of stems to sell sometimes it just feels like there's not a lot to offer wholesale but I'm finally at the point in my successions where some of the Valentine's Day stems are coming in a bit earlier and therefore I have more than I would have anticipated and it makes it a lot more attractive for a florist to want to buy because if they're going to make the trip to pick up assuming it's a local florist then they can make that trip and buy like a dozen bunches at a given time so right now that florist has seven bunches that they've bought that they're going to pick up for me on Saturday and we're going to see if that can potentially go up once I list some additional stems and varieties I just want to show you how awesome white valley exotic emperor is looking so this is the first time I'm growing her uh, it's a really interesting tulip because it's a double, but it's got these like spiky edges and it's got this like chartreuse green, uh, like coloring on the outside petals. And this is supposed to open up from like a creamy yellow to more of like an ivory white over time. I love this right now. I mean, this is feeling pretty bulky. I was a little bit nervous because like this is what she looked like in the beginning and it didn't look very impressive but once she opens up it's amazing so i think what i'm going to do for the csa bouquets is i'm going to pair these with some columbus and some verona and i think they're going to look spectacular so i will show you what those bouquets look like in fact i'm probably going to see if i can time myself making them just to show you how easy it is for me to make all of those bouquets and really like hammer home the point as to why i love hydroponic forcing because of the lack of labor compared to field grown tulips so look at how much these exotic emperor white valleys have progressed i already harvested from some this morning for some last minute a la carte bouquets that went out but this is more or less ready to harvest so because this tray is more or less all evenly uh, ready i'm gonna just put all of it into the garage and buy me some time and cooler space so both of these buckets will go into the garage so here is my informal cooler in the garage so you can see it is holding 42 degrees in here which is more than sufficient to get me to Saturday, which is about a day and a half away. So some exciting times now. It is time to make 
bouquets for the CSA deliveries tomorrow. I have a total of 13 bouquets that I need to make. 10 of them are going to the CSA customers. I actually had a customer yesterday who I would have delivered to, but she needed two a la carte bouquets and I just gave her her bouquet because it's gonna be very frigid weather tomorrow. So we actually have to delay the delivery time windows uh, just to make sure that people would be home when they receive it. I have hired out a driver for that. So it's her first time. And of course it's gonna be one of these uh, icy snowy conditions. But regardless, we gotta make 10 for the CSA customers. There's two that are going for last minute a la carte bouquets and then one bouquet for the driver on top of what I pay her. And I will give more details in that when I wrap up this video. But first, let's make these bouquets. I'll show you how I make them efficiently and we're gonna time it and see how long it takes me to make 13 bouquets.
time for our favorite part, numbers. So I thought this would be a really good time for me to break down both retail and wholesale from just a high level revenue perspective and getting all the way down to nitty gritty of the profit piece of it. And I'm gonna prove to you why for me, selling wholesale to florists is actually more profitable. So let's dig into those numbers. This week so far, uh, cause the week is technically not over. I sold a total of seven retail a la carte bouquets, 13 bouquets through the CSA, and then 14 and a half bunches through wholesale. There's a florist who buys 25 from me at a time. So that gets me to a total of 314 stems. So that's 169 retail stems and 145 wholesale stems. Total revenue brought in was $661. Now, when I break that apart, that profit for that $661 was actually $437. So let's break down how I got to that $437 in profit. Let's start with the retail side. So retail side, when we look at just how long it takes for me to make a bouquet, you saw me basically uh, harvesting hydroponically, taking the bulb off. I've learned to cut down a lot of time by just harvesting straight into bunches, putting them into uh, like the bucket, into the refrigerator, and then sleeving if they are already pre-sold. So that's actually cut down quite a bit of time for me to get that profitability number up, even though I've raised my per hourly wage from $15 to $20. So when I break down making a retail bouquet for like my CSA customer or for a la carte bouquets, harvesting takes about one minute. You saw that. Sleeve and stamping, we'll call it about 10 seconds. Making the mixed bouquet itself takes about 40 seconds through this process that I laid out. So putting two at a time and therefore I don't need to finagle around to make sure that the colors are evenly spread. Uh, that assembly line process also has saved me a lot of time. So that's 40 seconds. Wrapping and snipping the ends of the bouquet is another 10 seconds. So total time soup to nuts, we'll call it two minutes to make a single nine stem bouquet here. And it's really the same even if I put in like 10 stems or 12 stems at this point. So what does that break down to cost? So the time, so let's let's actually break it down into per 10 stem bouquet cost because we're gonna compare this to bunches that are sold in wholesale in tens. So time is 67 cents, sleeve is 25 cents, the bulb, which includes the labor to grow, since I have dialed that in, is about $5 per 10 stem. So that's about 50 cents a bulb, including labor. And then that means that the total is $5.92. So that means is that when I look at my profit per stem on the retail side, it's $1.39. Now let's do the same type of math for the wholesale side. So I said that I sell in bunches of 10 wholesale. So to make a whole bunch of 10 harvest thing is the same it's one minute the sleeve is 10 seconds and then that's a total of a minute and 10 seconds or we'll call it 40 cents in terms of time when you translate that for a 20 dollars per hour wage so clearly i'm skipping the process of needing to arrange multiple colors which means that i get down to the wholesale cost of bunching per 10 uh, stems is five dollars and 65 cents that's close to a 30 cent difference in costs for a bunch of 10 for wholesale versus a mixed bouquet of 10 retail. That 30 cents starts adding up once you start doing dozens and dozens of bouquets. Here's the other thing. I stopped delivering to florists. Florists either have to come to me to pick up or they they pay for shipping and I overnight ship. And of course, in that scenario, then there is a lot more cost associated because the labor of packaging does add on a little bit. But in this case, this week, the two florists who bought from me both picked up from me and one florist bought 12 bunches at a time right now. So that was the one who had had seven in her cart. She added another five last night. So she's up to 12 right now. And those are the best type of wholesale orders because it is just super, super efficient as you can see. So what that means is that my wholesale stem profitability is a dollar and 51 cents, which is pretty impressive. So in other words, my wholesale profitability per stem is actually better than my retail. And that is because of this dynamic where I'm selling to high-end designers 
who are able to command that $2 premium per stem. When I sell retail, I'm actually not selling that much higher above wholesale. It definitely is higher than wholesale, but it's not like a full extra dollar. So this is why I am shifting most of my sales this year to wholesale because it just makes more sense for me. Now, one thing I did say that I would touch a bit on is my CSA. It's been snowing outside. Uh, the snow should be cleared by tomorrow. Typically, I deliver between nine to noon, but it is going to be very, very frigid. It's gonna be in the 20s at the highest. So tulips cannot be left outside the door if it's that cold. And I did hire out to a driver. So this person who I hired out to is actually one of the teachers at my child daycare uh, so she's gonna be doing the route I'm gonna pay her $20 an hour the route takes about an hour 35 minutes so she's gonna get the full $40 because that also accounts for the mileage that she would incur by using her car and then she also gets a free bouquet on top of that so we are gonna see how that goes but that's effectively gonna save me close to two hours of time on a Saturday allowing me to do some other stuff so I hope this video was helpful for you. This is what it looks like in the week behind the scenes of forcing tulips. I have a lot of other stems coming in, right? So there's a couple of things to take away from this video. No matter what part of the year you're in, if you're growing and you're challenging yourself, you're always gonna have this influx of stems where you just have to figure out how to push them. You always wanna be growing more than what you've already pre-sold because that gives you the opportunity to sell more. The second thing is really, really dialing in those numbers. I mean, I think it's really eye-opening even for myself to see how profitable wholesale can be and where I can dial in some of those labor costs, right? So I recognize that I was spending too much time harvesting, too much time bunching, and making bouquets. So what were the ways that I could really cut down on that? And that really turn into me just harvesting directly into bunches and into buckets. And it's really cut down about a third of the time from what I was spending before. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.